Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Video, as always, thank you very much for joining me, where today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Hammer Boy, a 2003 Korean animated film. Now this gets into the question of whether a Korean animated film is technically anime, but for now we'll just, you know, put that aside and just do this review. Now some have compared Hammer Boy to Hayao Miyazaki's films, and that's misleading. Uh, it borrows much of its plot from Miyazaki's TV series Future Boy Conan, and the main character has a, a weapon uh, very, very similar to that of the main character from Miyazaki's uh, Horus Prince of the Sun, a film he, uh, that Miyazaki worked on uh, a long, long time ago. Now, ironically, that's probably Hammer Boy's biggest strength, because as an adventure film, it follows a well-established plot line that just jumps from plot point to plot point. This means that the plot is quite logical, jumping from crisis to crisis in a way that makes a lot of sense to the viewer. It focuses on a young boy who lives in a peaceful post-apocalyptic village um, who is interrupted by bad guys and there's a princess he's trying to save and all that good stuff. Now, the animation is probably the biggest sticking point for Hammer Boy. It would be perfectly acceptable as a standard TV series, especially like an American TV series, Think of like a Warner Brothers uh, uh, sort of show. Uh, but this is certainly not a movie quality animation budget. The shadows are too flat and the animation is just uh, not smooth enough and uh, not detailed enough for what we expect out of a movie. There's also this odd lack of scale. Um, the characters are often put in a sort of large environment, but it never really feels epic in that you know more classic sense of the term. It doesn't feel like there's big... Um, it feels like there's big stuff going on, but it doesn't feel like the characters are in these really huge environments in some odd way. And the film's editing and cinematography feel constrained in a similar way. It feels like it's kind of rushing to broadcast. Um, the editing of individual scenes and shots just move forward at an effective pace, but there's very little sense of um, uh, cutting very rapidly in certain scenes or dragging other scenes out. Um, just none of the moments really feel particularly special or feel particularly uh, remarkable. In particular, the scenes don't really evoke emotion that much. That is, they don't drive towards a particular um, emotional reaction other than the standard one expected from the scene. Now, the film does do a fine job establishing its characters. In particular, the main character, the boy and the princess that he's trying to save, um, establish this strong affection for each other that never crosses over into like puppy dog love. Uh, they just really you know, respect each other uh, very strongly, which is a pretty impressive uh, feat for an 80-minute action film. The rest of the supporting cast also fill their roles quite well. Um, they, there's not much special to any of them. There, there's almost no depth to any of the supporting cast. Again, it's a relatively short film, um, but they do fill their roles well. Impressively, each of the characters also has a distinctive speaking style meaning that the princess, for example, sounds more educated, the main character has a more relaxed style, uh, the mentor is a little more uh, clipped and terse, and in general, everyone just has their own uh, method of speaking. That said, there's almost no memorable dialogue. Um, pretty much every line is there to push the story forward or to establish some uh, uh, character a little bit, um, but it's pretty workaday dialogue. Now let's talk about the world a little bit. Uh, Hammer Boy is set in a post-apocalyptic world, but where things have reverted back to a more peaceful subsistence living of kind of agrarian um, uh, life and fishing and things along those lines. Now there is a certain amount of fantasy to it. For example, the main character has this sort of bicycle slash parasail contraption that he uses. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of technology like that doesn't feel particularly consistent. Um, you don't quite understand why some character, you know, some civilizations have more advanced technologies and others don't. Um, I think it's just kind of left up to the viewer to understand. Fortunately, it doesn't get in the way of the story. This is set in a strange post-apocalyptic future, and those sorts of weird kinds of technology are just kind of assumed. Now, the English dub was actually made by quite a few anime professionals, so you'll have no problems there. And uh, Pokemon fans, the boy and the princess are voiced by the original Ash and Misty, respectively. Overall, Hammer Boy is an effectively plotted adventure film with a well-established set of characters. Uh, the animation is simple, but gets the job done. 
Um, if you want to be impressed by Korean animation, I would not look here. I'd probably look towards Sky Blue or You'll Be the Five-Tailed Fox. That said, Himmer Boy is an effective little film.